Hey guys, it's Melissa from Kiwi Banana here and we're back to part two of my Q&A and as I said I'm going to be answering the more sort of serious questions and I want to um, cover a little bit within them um, so the other one was, was just basically one question and so this one here I'm going to ask, it's actually it's kind of a long question and it's got various parts to it um, so I thought that maybe doing one video on it would probably do it better justice um, and as I said I will be reading off my laptop but I will be trying to look at the screen as much as I can and um, so yeah let's get into it so the second question that I got asked um, starting off with it was around hormones and detoxing on a high carb lifestyle so as some of you may know there are different variations of high carb vegan diets and I've never personally eaten starch solution um, which is mostly cooked um, high carb whole food vegan food and um, and I haven't done fully raw for long periods of time um, I, I don't even think I've ever done one day of starch solution and I dabble in a bit of fully raw uh, maybe about one day a week sort of thing um, so I mostly eat the rule to four sort of guidelines of course I, I did not strict on that and um, yeah so basically what I wanted to say with those high carb vegan diets they're very similar in macronutrients and can do similar things to the mind and body although some may argue differently anyway so first thing I want to talk about detoxing and I personally did not experience any physical detox symptoms such as constipation or diarrhea, brain fog, um, low energy, headaches, body aches, extreme cravings. I personally came from a reasonably whole foods omnivore uh, diet and stopped buying eggs and milk for a while. I didn't even realise that I was going more vegan until one day I sort of woke up and was like oh if I stop eating meat I probably would be vegan and yeah so it happened pretty quickly and I'll do a video in the future about my transition to the raw for lifestyle um, I must say that I did experience some emotional and mental detox um, and that's something that I would probably do another video on in the future because um, I think that's maybe something that uh, not many people seem to cover and I thought is probably quite important. So also in this question they mentioned about periods um, and <sighs> yeah, so, so if I would say if you're experiencing any of those detox um, symptoms yeah, I should probably go back to English. If, if you're experiencing any of those sort of detox symptoms, I'd probably recommend that you eat more whole plant um, food, high carb food, um, especially if you've got extreme cravings. Um, and getting those nutrient levels is probably quite good. Um, yeah, so if you if you detox or anything like that, probably the best thing I'd recommend is more whole plant foods, and make sure you're getting enough water too. That's quite important. Right, so back to the periods I would I've never had my hormones checked personally but that's something that you may want to um, ask your doctor you may want to talk to your doctor about that see that they can do some tests on that and I'm this person was females and so I'm as um, you know hormones periods it's quite complicated I guess for women a little bit more straightforward for men and there are so many factors that can alter a woman's hormones so looking at your choice of contraception might be the best start um, if you've been on hormonal contraception which most young women and teenagers are then it could take a long time for your hormones to get back to normal um, you know like their own rhythm and um, natural level whatever that may be for some people I've heard it could take up to a year or even more um, you would want to get off any hormonal contraception would probably be a good start if you're not um, then you might want to get off it and use alternative um, contraception measures and there's um, 
there's quite a bit of st stuff out there you could probably find that on the internet I would assume um, as we know hormonal contraception is basically a sex, sex steroid and we don't really want to be prescribing women steroids but that's what society does so yeah so try and get off them if you can It'll probably be a good start um, I personally started getting my period only started getting my period in the last few months and it's been about one teaspoon um, for one day a month um, so that's great <laughs> it's actually probably that's brilliant I, I could not think of yeah anyway I digress from that so I was personally on hormonal contraception from the age of 14 up to about December last year and you also have to remember with the your question about the periods um, I'm not really sure whether you're asking like whether you're just not getting it or maybe your cycles um, quite out of whack but you also have to remember that you can ovulate without actual menstruation and and that's fine um, yeah this is probably a video I might want to warn any male listeners out there they probably don't really want to hear me talk about this um, yeah it's, it's, so you have a look up of um, there's kind of a difference between ovulation and menstruation and you, of course you want to be ovulating every month um, whether you menstruate or not you know basically is there a period coming in and out is um, not necessarily needed it, 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 yeah if you if, if there's no period it's no menstruation um, it's not necessarily a bad thing Okay, while we're on the topic of periods, I just want to say if any of you out there are suffering from any terrible symptoms with your cycle, a high carb plant based um, diet will help you a lot. Um, no headaches, very little pain, very light flow as I said, um, very little emotional disturbances as well. And um, it's, I've, I've seen it even help people that have endometriosis. Um, so it, it can really help a lot of women out there um, but of course it, it's hard to get that information out there because um, we're misinformed with conflicting information and, and um, no. okay I won't go into that <laughs> um, now the other area of the question they ask is about pimples um, and I think it's all to do with like the whole the detox part and the hormonal part of the question Obviously you want to stay plant-based and any of you out there that are not you then you definitely Definitely want to stay away from anything that's made out of cow's milk. It has huge amounts of gross hormones in it And they promote pimples basically. It's all over the internet It's well, uh, well known in the medical industry and I've seen huge changes in friends of mine that um, You know, they may still eat um, other animal products they take the dairy out and your pimples no problem almost gone um, I personally found that if I eat higher fat foods like um, nut butters and oils and things like uh, stress and lack of sleep give me pimples um, and I do have them and that's I'll probably say majority of the reason that I have them is because I choose to do too many things <laughs> so stress really so stress is really probably the thing that would I would say probably gets me the most okay um, before I get into the food side I just want to mention that you should have a little good look at what you're putting on your skin as well so no makeup is best um, and you want to but if you want to still wear it have a really good look at the ingredients that are in there um, checking your moisturizer and cleanser is also really important uh, some people don't even use them. I personally wash my face twice a day with a cleanser and I moisturise um, once a day and that's in the morning. Um, my ingredients are sort of organic, very low, um, very little in the ingredient list anyway. And um, cruelty free obviously and no animal products. Um, you know, and some people just use one or two ingredients to wash their face. I've heard people using things like coconut oil and stuff like that. I don't know if I'd recommend that. I haven't tried it myself. Um, so I, be, I also have a really bad habit of touching my face and picking up pimples, which is 
probably a really bad thing to do considering um, one of my jobs is to handle and count thousands of dollars every day that I'm at, at the workplace. Um, you know, money is very dirty and we know that and counting it, you're touching it, touching your face, not a good idea. They say something like, um, there's a gram of cocaine on every US dollar note or something. And, we even have machines that weigh the notes, and if the notes are too new, then um, they don't register, because the older they are, the more dirt that they've got on them, and then they become heavier. Bizarre. But anyway, um, to try not to touch your face would be a good thing, and some people will find different climates and different environmental pollutants affect their skin differently as well. Um, so you may want to look at some of those things, uh, whether they could be affecting your skin. Um, so now I'll probably get into the food factor. Um, some people react to different foods in different ways. So you could experiment a bit with that. Um, eating more dark greens probably wouldn't hurt. And they're full of a lot of um, micronutrients and help flushing out things in the body that it doesn't like. Now I have seen that uh, things like vitamin C, vitamin E, zinc, selenium, alcohol, gluten for some people and highly processed foods can cause acne um, so you may sorry those nutrients I've said you may want to get them checked and um, you may want to do some experiments on yourself um, with things like gluten and you know, probably want to stay away from highly processed foods you know not everybody in the world is gluten tolerant um, I think it's a little bit of a craze that some people have taken on that's a topic for another day um, so getting enough water is extremely important of course and some spices like cinnamon, ginger and turmeric could help and I've even um, seen that some herbs can help as well. Now there was one little part to the question where they talked about candida so I thought I would cover that um, and this is the last part of the Q&A. So I haven't experienced candida much throughout my life personally however for those who don't know, it's a little microbe that helps regulate blood sugar levels. And when the pancreas is overworked from high fat foods, then candida can be a problem. And sugar feeds it, and it just becomes a real big problem. However, if you're following a high carb diet and still experiencing this, then maybe increasing some dark greens and keeping your fat intake quite low is probably going to help. Um, you know, I probably should say, if you guys want um, some more medical knowledge on any of these sort of things I've talked about, then I possibly would recommend um, Christopher's channel, and I will put a description, uh, I will put a link of his channel in the description box below. I found him quite good. Um, he's a young fella, but he does seem to have quite a scientific... Um, mindset background around sort of the high carb um, lifestyle and some of those things he um, has also has a lot of access to a lot of medical um, information as well um, so yeah I'll, I'll leave a link in the description box below and I'm sure I hope he won't mind I'm sure he won't mind um, me seeing you guys over there if you need any more answers on things like that or more detail so yeah, let me know if you have any more other questions and um, pop them in the description box below. No, description. Put a comment in the uh, down below and I hope you've done something that makes you happy today. See ya.